Rocket Lab's report was uh, absolutely phenomenal. So let me go to Rock, Rocket Lab. Um, let me pull them up real quick. So Rocket Lab was expected to have 150 million in revenue uh, and they basically beat that by a little bit, two and a half or two point seven percent. They reported one hundred and fifty five million. Their EPS was expected to be minus ten cents. They uh, beat that minus three cents, but that was largely because of a one time tax benefit. So you can kind of ignore the beat on EPS. What was really uh, fantastic with Rocket Labs uh, revenue was their uh, was their guidance which I'm not sure why this changed to neutral, but they, they were expected to have a, you know, like similar sort of 150 to $160 million revenue um, for, for next quarter. And they increased their revenue target to 170 to 180 million for Q4. Now, this is mostly coming from uh, space systems, which is basically building satellites, but also their electron rocket, which is this, you know, $8 million per launch or seven to $8 million per launch uh, electron to put satellites into orbit is also getting more, more, more and more launches and more and more commitments, despite the fact that they have neutron in development, the reusable rocket. And of course, there's the sort of Falcon 9 uh, from SpaceX. These guys continue to execute exceptionally well, and then their neutron is on the way. One negative uh, was that they were hoping all year they've been guiding that they hope to do their test launch of the neutron rocket, rocket this year but that got pushed to at least Q1 of 2026. So that was the negative there. Uh, people thought that if the neutron rocket gets delayed, that uh, the stock might take a huge hit. And, um, but you know, Rocket Lab is just executing so well. Their satellite revenue is growing so rapidly. Their electron revenue is growing so rapidly that you just cannot like uh, discount those things. And just because of a three month delay and be like, Oh, you know, I don't want to own and I this. I feel company. like it has to be priced in, right? Like it's very common in this industry that there's going to be 100%. some sort of delay of, you know, especially when it comes to newer technology. 100%, 100%. And one of the things that uh, Peter Beck, and I, I love Peter Beck as a CEO, founder, CEO uh, led company, um, just very articulately put is that, you know, no one's going to remember a three month delay, but they will remember a rocket that, you know, explodes. Um, and then the other thing that, uh, in contrast to SpaceX, so, you know, SpaceX has deliberately taken this approach with the uh, Starship program of, hey, we're going to be launching, you know, 10 to 20 times before we're actually successful. And most of these are going to blow up. They've kind of set that expectation from early on for people who are paying attention. So I, I think the headlines are hilarious that they, you know, like every headline yeah, is like, oh, SpaceX rocket blows up. But uh, with uh, with Rocket Lab, they're deliberately setting the opposite expectation that like our first launch better make it to orbit. Like Peter Beck is actually basically saying that he's like, we're not going to be, you know, oh, it cleared the launch pad and we're going to consider that a success. No, it, it better make it to orbit. So the second launch, you know, they're wanting to actually put uh, satellites into orbit by their second launch. And I think the second launch is a revenue launch at least planned to be a revenue launch. So um, very different expectations there. And if they are successful at that, I think, you, you know, Neutron is going to make a massive uh, difference for Rocket Lab in the future. So Absolutely. again, another company, I, I love the fact that I own, it's not my number one position. I don't, you know, want to trim that at all. Um, there might be other reasons for it. I'm going to have a huge tax bill this year. So who knows <laughs> what I might do. Um, next year, but, uh, but yeah. And did, did you follow ASTS's, uh, earnings at all? I did. I, so I listened to their, uh, full earnings call and ASTS for me is one of these companies that has, um, uh, like if they're able to deliver on what they promise and what they have sold, basically, they have a billion dollar, uh, revenue backlog, which is pretty incredible. Like you know, Rocket Lab has a $1.1 billion revenue backlog, but their Rocket Lab's $1.1 billion revenue backlog is for all the things they can do and have been doing. Electron launches, you know, you know, like uh, satellite systems, all of these things that that's their expertise. They've been doing it for a few years. 
Um, so there's no doubt that that $1.1 billion of revenue backlog will come to fruition. ASTS has a uh, billion dollar revenue backlog, but it's all on technology that is largely unproven. Now they have done, you know, single tests here and there um, of their uh, tech to sort of prove that you can have a phone call via space-based satellites. But to do this at scale for millions of simultaneous uh, uh, phones and uh, to do it worldwide using a handful of sa satellites, it's just something that has not been proven. And this company doesn't have a track record of proven stuff for us to point to uh, and, and uh, be comfortable with. Now, if they can do what they say they're going to do over the course of the next six months to a year, you know, ASTS might be a severely undervalued company at, you know, like a $20 billion valuation, but um, uh, because it's going to grow revenues very, very rapidly. But can they do this? No one else has, has done this. And, you, you know, like, uh, is this sort of, sort of one of those anomalies that everyone ignored? Uh, SpaceX just said, eh, we're not going to do that. Like, or is the technology more difficult than they have led on to be? And that is, unknown that is the unknown risk factor from my standpoint on let's, let's assume that um they the technology works do you think that they have a strong moat with the partnerships that they're building or do you think a spacex or a rocket lab could fairly easily compete with them yeah that's a, that's a great question so um because they have been 100 percent focused on this and they already have established these relationships with like something like 50 different partners worldwide, by the way, not just in the US. So they have Verizon, the AT&T. Did you see AT&T was tweeting about them and using the the A emoji? Like they <laughs> were like all in, it was fun. Yeah, so, you, you know, I'll give them that, that like the, uh, the carriers have 100% trust and belief that these guys can pull it off. So, you know, that is a pretty solid endorsement. Um, I'm I'm just not convinced that the carriers know, you know, what to exactly look for here. Like, it's space-based satellites. There's so many different complexities there that, like, not everyone is uh, well positioned to be able to evaluate the tech. So, the tech is unproven. Until I see otherwise, the tech is unproven. As far as I'm concerned, this is a very very difficult problem to to solve and. Uh, um, you, you know, by the way, like I'll, I'll give you one other quick example on on the tech. So when we talk about, for example, the closest tech to this is Star Star, or the closest concept to this is Starlink, with uh, satellites doing uh, laser based communication to these dishes that Starlink has for high speed internet. The, the The difference is that technology was proven on the ground, meaning you could get high speed uh, dish based. Uh, uh, internet connectivity locally because you, you know there would be vendors that would set up these things on mountains and cover an entire region like a metropolitan region um, using laser guided and they, they would just point their uh, laser guided dishes to like a, a particular metropolitan area and they would be able to sell these receivers that basically gave you high speed internet through what they, I forget what the exact term was, but the technology is very, very similar. That now, you know, SpaceX just took it to space and is doing that. Um, what ASTS is doing, no one is doing that on, on the ground. Like m most, uh, you, you know, of this 4G and L LTE networks only work within a five, 10 mile radius at the most. So no one is able to do really high number of calls uh, for like a hundred mile radius or 50 mile radius even. Um, and these guys plan on doing it for hundreds of mile radius from the satellite. Uh, and a single dish, a single satellite is supposed to, you, you know, be able to carry millions of calls, each of which are going to have some wattage requirements of power. Uh, there's like power complexities. You need to have like solar. I mean, th there's a lot of complexity. I'm just not convinced that these guys who have never like, you know, uh, done something like this before to be able to pull it off. And the delays don't make me confident either, right? Like their uh, first two satellites were supposed to start sh shipping out to orbit in July. They now expect to hope to have them out in December. So 
a lot of concerns. But, you know, if they are able to do it, more power to them because, uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, you know, obviously all of my concerns were wrong. And I think that these guys will easily be a multi-billion dollar revenue company in five years.